Yes, yes, team, welcome back to the Total Mental Performance Podcast. Today, we're changing up the angle a little bit. We're not looking at business or coaching. We're diving into the world of art. And today, we've got Mr. Jordan Breen. He is a a full-time artist, and he's been doing some incredible, incredible stuff. And uh, I thought it'd be interesting, interesting to get a different slant, a different view. Because when we look at creativity and we look at, and this is an underrated skill in mental performance coaching, is how can we be more creative? And if we look at creativity, it's the ability to create connections from one thing to another and express that, whether that's for your business, whether it's for your content, whether it's for your art. And that's why I thought, you know what? It'd be really cool to bring Jordan on. So Jordan, mate, I appreciate you and your time. Thank you so much for jumping on the pod. No worries. Thanks very much for having me. Excited for this thing. How did uh how did you get here? Like how how did you get to the place where you just become a full time artist? Well, should we start at the very beginning? Yeah. Or, yeah. Well, growing up, like as a young kid, I was always obsessed with art. Like this like coloring books, drawing, basically just anything creative with my hands. I even remember stuff like if like my mum was going bringing the recycling rubbish out to the, to the blue bin, I would like be stealing like a empty orange juice carton and cleaning it out and then trying to turn it into like car or something or whatever i was interested in at the time and i feel like even when i was younger i'd be trying to make these like inventions out of rubbish but like <laughs> none of them ever worked like but it was fun at the time and then yeah so i guess i was always just really in the art but even when i was younger I, would, I don't think i was particularly like gifted or naturally really talented or anything but i definitely had like just a natural interest into it and i think as well like growing up i was like a really hyperactive kid and like fidgety couldn't sit still full of energy but art's always been that one thing that I could hyper focus on and just like focus on for like five hours straight when there's like nothing in the world that I could do that with. Like even like watching TV, even still today, like I can't really watch TV shows because I just lose interest or I'm daydreaming out the window. But art's always just been that one thing. I guess the turning point for me was the lockdown in 2020 because obviously the kind of world stood still for a bit. And uh, I'm, uni kind of went on a, hold or whatever so then i moved back home to ireland and i was getting furloughed from the pub i was working in so i was getting paid 125 pound a week at the time so i thought this was class having all this free time a few quid coming in the bank but yeah so with all this free time i remember just toying with the idea i might try to start a wee business or some sort of side hustle and then i remember it so well actually i was just flicking on instagram on my phone and i just seen this artist i forget it i don't even remember who it was and it was like a painting of Dennis Bergkamp. Do you follow football? Dennis I'm a big Arsenal, I'm an Arsenal fan, mate. I've got, ben, I've got an Arsenal shirt collection on the left. Oh, Dennis you're, you're an Arsenal fan? Oh, no, I am, right? Yeah, uh, yeah. Up the Gunners. On Sunday. Up the Gunners. Big game on Sunday. Home to Liverpool. Yeah, no. But um, where was it? Yeah, so he did a paint of Dennis Bergkamp. And I seen he was selling it for £250. And I swear when I seen that, this opened this like a whole new world in my head. We're like, I can't believe people are doing this on Instagram. I just didn't know that it was a thing and obviously like 250 quid pound isn't isn't a lot of money but for me as a student never sold any artwork before i thought this was i thought that was crazy that he was doing that and i remember and it's quite funny when i was in school i never painted i only ever drew or anything like i was just like i just i'd never really painted so when i went on in 2020 this was pretty much my first ever painting which is weird now because it's like my job full-time painter i guess but um yeah, so I seen this guy do that painting. And do you remember in the lockdown when the Michael Jordan series came on Netflix, The Last Dance? I didn't watch that one though. No. Did you not watch it? Well, it was unreal when it came out, and it was obviously just about showing Michael Jordan and his determination and drive and willingness to be the best and stuff like that. And I think it must have like given me a kick up the arse or something, or it got me motivated in some way. Because I remember after watching that, I was just like, I'm gonna fucking I'm going to try to sell a patent or something. And like, I also didn't even know what I was doing at the time. So I just went on eBay, bought like the cheapest canvas, the cheapest acrylic paints and the cheapest um, brushes I could find. I was like, right, I'm just going to do this patent, see what happens. And then I spent like the next three weeks doing this patent, but like it definitely wasn't three wor- weeks worth of work. Like it was, I could do, I could do it in a day now. But I remember, um, I said like I was chipping away at it and I, was, I might do one day and then I'd be like, oh, fuck this, I can't be arsed, you know what I mean? And then like one day I'd be thinking, oh, I'm so motivated, I'm going to try to sell my patents. And then the next day I'd be like, oh, what a stupid idea. Like I would wake up and be like, oh, what's the point in that? Like, don't be stupid. And then I guess three weeks later, I finish this patent and it's so weird. Like, I don't think I'll ever get a fulfilling feeling like it from a piece of art because once I finished that patent, it was like this crazy feeling because it was like, 
almost like reassurance that like oh like i've still got it a bit because obviously as i was saying with like that creativity and not working that much so like i felt like i, I had just lost it all and i think once i finished that painting it was just like oh my god it just like opened up my mind i was like oh i haven't lost it all so then i was kind of riding that wave of motivation from finishing that one painting going into because then i guess like the lockdown was kind of easing up at the end of summer 2020 and i was moving back to liverpool and i was like my uni was done for that year i found this new motivation with peyton and i was going moving into like a new apartment so it just felt like a fresh start so then when i moved to liverpool i was like fuck it i'm just gonna start an instagram or art page uh called jordan brain art and i guess that's when jordan brain art was born so then i guess going into that i was thinking all right like i had no intentions i like i didn't think this was going to make me money or anything i just thought it'd be interesting just to keep doing it and see where it takes me and then i did a painting of mcgregor posted it on my facebook and i think i might have got like 400 likes and at the time that felt like that was claws and then i had a few inquiries by people looking custom paintings and i was oh fuck maybe this is like potential so then i remember i booked them my first client and it was of anthony joshua and i think it was like 100 pound at the time but fuck i was buzzing like and i think it took me like two weeks to do but like even at the time i didn't really think about how I was getting paid like what 50 quid a week i just felt like oh this is unreal like i didn't even like i felt like oh my god i'm gonna do this forever now but like i didn't even add up the the numbers thinking like how how is that gonna keep me afloat so yeah that's basically how i got started anyway and then that brought me to when's that summer 2020 so then i had a few cl- commissions booked in and I essentially just kept on chipping away at this while i did my final year oh sorry i did my final year of um graphic design so i kind of i kind of worked out lucky for me that my final year of graphic design was work from home because of covid so i was doing everything over zoom but then i could also paint from my house so i was just working on them side by side and i guess this kind of might sound weird like but like before this happened like i wasn't like i was so bad at managing my time like i was always like i could never apply myself but then when i was working from home something i just figured something out where like I realized that I'm most productive in the morning. So I said to myself, I'll just do two hours of uni work every single morning, every single day, and then I'll paint in the evenings. So I just thought if I just did a wee bit every single day of uni work, like, and just did it every day, because two hours is easy rather than like, you know, big chugs. So I just thought I'll do that. And then i would paint in the evenings. And for that whole year, I just like grafted, gave it my absolute everything. Because <laughs> when I was in university, like I never went in my first three years. And then my final year, I brought it up, I was sitting on a third, like I was doing shit like, and then I brought it up to a two one and I finished on a two one. So I was pretty happy with that. And then I was working on the painting side by side with it. So then obviously I didn't, I didn't like this graphic design degree. I just, I just didn't see a career path in that for me. And then I, yeah, so I finished the degree and I was doing this painting, but as I said, hundred pound for painting, 200 pound for paintings, like not really sustain- sustainable and i kind of only realized that when i finished uni i was like oh fuck maybe like because i was getting these patents and i thought i was making loads of money and then i crunched the numbers i was like god oh, jesus christ i made like 200 quid each month for the last three months i was like fuck i don't think that's gonna bring me too far so then i was working i was pretty much working full time in this pub that i'd previously worked in and doing the patents on the side and i guess i essentially did that from 20 the start of 2021 until december 2022 when I decided to go full time as an artist, I guess January twenty three, so about a year ago. But it's quite funny, like when I decided to go full time, I was never in a position there because that two year period it was kind of like it was consistent, but it wasn't like like hundred percent focused. I was a bit stop start, like I was made to do like since I was working full time in the pub, like the painting would take a back seat and it would just be hard to balance it. So like it didn't really feel like I was like moving towards full time. It was more just kind of like. I just I was, just wasn't happy working in the pub and I guess it was one of them things it was like the pain of what's what's that saying where it's like the pain of staying the same is the worst than the pain of changing something like that you know what I mean so I had to make a change so I just handed my notice in the pub and I had like I had no money in the bank I had like a 50 minus 1500 pound overdraft from uni and like maybe one or two commission clients booked in but they're only like a couple hundred pound in each and I was I didn't have a student loan anymore since I was done uni, so I was paying rent. So I was in a position where I had no money, no real guaranteed income, and overdrafts that were accumulating interest rates or whatever, paying like 40 quid a month just to be in the debt. 
and then yeah and like my, my rent was overdue so i wasn't in the best position at the start of 2023 but i just said to myself like i knew i knew i had some talent like i knew i had a skill there that could that i could monetize but i just didn't have the audience to do it or like the business knowledge or really anything so i said to myself for the first six months of 2023 my whole focus was going to be social media and try to build up uh an audience or whatever because the way i say it like if i've got the ability all i need is the eyes to see it so that was my goal and then i'll see that's where i met sean or first got introduced to sean sean casey that is because i kind of knew i knew of, of what he did and the same he did the social circle and the same he was getting all these mad results but obviously it was nothing to do with the social circle but i seen he had a massive following and he seemed just like a nice honest person so i just thought right i might reach out to him offer to do him a patent and maybe he might do like a story in return or something like that you know just you know the way it works and so i was like i just felt like what what do i have to lose so i reached out to him and he asked me to paint a picture of him and his granda and i was thinking oh that's like a really sentimental piece so i was thinking oh, i must have a lot of trust in me and this is when he was actually moving to australia at this time for like a few months so i'd booked that in and since he was moving to australia there was no real like panic on it because he wasn't back for like four months anyway so I started it and then I kind of just worked on it on the side over the, across like four months maybe. But it probably took me about 60 hours, but I was also doing other things on the side. But so I spent a lot of time making this best as I can for him. So I'll say I was like trying to like over deliver since this patent was for free. And then, yeah, I did the patent for him. He was blown away and he essentially, as a thank you, gave me access to the social circle, his social media growth course. And then that's kind of when everything started the turned around for me like two weeks later i had one video that blew up and gained me i went from 2k followers to 40k followers in the space of a couple of weeks and then yeah that was it then i had more commissions booked in and then i was just all in from then to now but i guess that was only in like may of last year when i when i first got a, a bit of a following but like i still wasn't making great money i was still like heavily undercharged myself just because i wasn't valuing my time right so i was still in a position where i was paying rent but like any money that I was making was going to rent or my uh, overdraft paying it off so it was just constantly costing my tail i was just like this felt so stressful so i was like right i'm gonna move back home with my mum where i am now in ireland in skilling the small town i'm from this so i didn't have to pay loads of money on rent i could just like work here put all my focus into my painting and just and I guess it's a win-win too. Get to give my mom company and give her some money to help her out and stuff like that. So that's what I did in July of 2023. And since then, I was just having missed the beat, essentially. Just working pretty much all day, every day. Just painting, working on my social media. And just trying to get better at what I do. And then it kind of all worked out. I had about four or five videos get multiple million views. I had a video of a portrait, a dog commission there. That's on 14 million views now. And I've went up to 400 and don't know what 420,000 followers on Instagram now and like a 5,000 person email waiting list for commissions so yeah it's mad it's kind of turned around and that is essentially how I got to here in a nutshell wow what a story <laughs> funny how dogs always kick off oh dogs, that's anything, crazy anything with dogs it's mad anything with dogs goes well because uh, like I would also like even when I was making my content, I could never really, it took me ages to find this video that one could pop off, but two be like the video I wanted to pop off, if that makes sense. Because the very first video that got me up to 40K, it was kind of like a patent tutorial. And the audience that that was bringing in is more like beginner artists who want to learn how to paint. And they're not essentially the customers that want to buy commissions. But then the next few videos were dog uh, patents. And they just like got millions of views. So that's just bringing crazy amounts of potential customers who love dogs and they want their dog painting. So I just I just kind of figured out a framework for a video that works for me as a, an artist, you know. So it worked out well. But yeah, people go mad for dogs. Absolutely mental. Compared to anything else, like. Yeah. Dog video, all of it goes well, absolutely crazy and viral. Oh, yeah, crazy as well. So... When I look at a lot of entrepreneurs, artists, musicians, athletes, I often put them into the same bracket and mm -hmm. often they have quite scattered minds. So they're usually mm -hmm. very good at things that most people find difficult. And then they, they really suck 
at the things that most people find quite normal, whether that's time management, the ability to concentrate, the ability to listen, they kind of all over the shop. That's also that craziness. That's what creates their creativity. And what you said there was interesting, which is creativity is a muscle. Now, a lot of my clients, they, uh, they spend a lot of time building companies, building businesses. So they're just behind the laptop and they're just working and working and working. And what they don't realize is that they need new stimulus. They need new shit going on in order for them to, to, to become creative. Yeah. But for you, it seems like the opposite because you got a load of new stimulus in Liverpool, but it didn't stoke creative fires, which no, fascinates me. Whereas when you go back to your hometown and mm -hmm. that stability, that's where you became more creative. So yeah. I've seen the, the, the opposite effect in reverse. Mm. So what would you say your patterns behind creativity are? What is it that makes you go, oh, okay, that's interesting. Let me look at this or that. Well, like as you were saying there, like the way I moved to Liverpool and it was kind of the opposite effect. Like, I don't even know if this is real, but sometimes I view myself as like having like two like separate identities. Some Sometimes I feel like there's like a, a work mode me and a chill me. And it's like, there's no real in between. There's either one or the other. So when I'm home, I'm in my wee bubble all day, every day. It feels like it's inevitable that I'm not going to be creative because like, I'm just in, I'm in work mode all the time. So I'm constantly getting these ideas. It's like a constant momentum. But then when I'm in Liverpool, it's like the complete the opposite. It's like a momentum down the more doing fuck all route where like all I want to do is chill, relax, have fun. Like there's no in between it's either like i'm gonna be in this zone where all i'm thinking about is the next thing i can do to have fun i'm thinking, oh what are we doing the night boys or i'm over here where all i think about is the next thing i want to do is new content idea new painting idea new anything this is weird that's what i mean so like i just feel creative based off momentum i think so like the more i create the more creative i feel so like and it's weird like i feel like i can gain momentum so quickly but lose it just as quick so even with like content like, I feel like the more videos I make, I just get, like, ideas all the time. I'm always putting them in notes on my phone or, like, voice memos. It's, like, speaking scripts, and then I listen through and kind of refine it and stuff like that. But, yeah. So I just feel like the more I do something, the creator of, the more creative I feel, whether that's, like, painting or ideas and all. Because even if I took, like, two weeks off creating content, I know it would take me a couple of weeks to get back into that flow. So it's it's, it's hard to explain. Do you ever find yourself um, when you spend too much time in that momentum, that creative flow, you lose that edge. And then when you have a short break, you come back and you're back in the game. On the oh, yeah, side, yeah. Like, too so, long, you get stuck. yeah, there's like a fine line between like taking the right amount of break and then taking too long. I, I actually always think that I feel like if I take, say, if I go have like a two days off or something, if I made that a third day off, I know I won't want to come back on the fourth day, but if like, if I get it right on the two days off, I'll be dying to come back and ready to work. So like, I feel like if I go over that, like relaxing threshold, I'm like, I'm in, I'm not the grind mode anymore. I'm the relaxing Jordan. So like, I feel like I'm quite self-aware in that sense where like, I know when the pull back or not. But while saying that though, it's like, I hate taking days off work too. I usually try to take like one day off a week only because like, it'll I'll probably be a benefit for me. So I usually take Saturdays off because I've got football. But like most Saturdays, I just be like, I, I want to paint or I want to do work. But then like it feels counterproductive. Is that even the right word? Um, Because like, I'll just be like draining myself a bit. But like, it's more like my brain wants to do it, but my body's telling me no or something. Mm -hmm. So like, I kind of have to take that one day off. But then sometimes if I take that one day off or like two days off, then I'm a different person. I don't want to go back to work. It's, it's, it's hard to... Hard to explain. It's almost like there's a very black and white version of your mind at the minute. Um, yeah, well, I, I've been told before I'm, I'm quite black and white thinker. I'm not sure if that's a good or bad thing, but... Mm. Well, it's a skill. So mm. um, you can start to learn to think in shades of the grey, so to speak. Mm. And it's not necessarily going from black, white, grey, because that's just another version of black, white. It's about mm. learning to dial it down and dial it up and knowing when mm. to dial it down and when to dial it up. Because most creatives, like for me, I have ADHD. So what that means is I, I get into 
hyper focus and I'm also very distractible. So things I'm not interested in can't concentrate on, kind of like you. Um, but then things I love, like podcasts mm. or coaching or speaking, I could do it yeah. for hours straight, no problem. Yeah, it sounds, the hard sounds thing great. is, you, when you're locked in, it feels so good. You don't want to come out of it, and oh, you actually yeah, do it that's... to the point where you stop eating and stop stop oh. drinking water, and then you get to the end, and then like you're doing it until you just burn out. You're like, ah, oh, oh, sounds, like, sounds like my day to day life, lad. Yeah, until you're spent. And, oh, and the key thing yeah. here is energy management. It's burning. Okay. All right. I, what are the red zones? What, so, for example, one of mine used to be I used to get a headache. Like when I used to start getting a headache, I'd be like, right, if I keep could continue working, which I used to do, this headache will turn from one out of ten to uh, to an eight out of ten. I need to get a lot of migraines. I was learning to spot the signs. So headaches is my. As soon as I start getting a headache, I then go, ah, okay, I need to pull back. I need to pull back. I need to pull back. Pull back. So that's learning how to dial that down so you d you're not so fucked when you try and go back to work the next day you got nothing left in the tank if that makes sense yeah i guess that's something i've definitely got better at through the years because like when i first started painting and like in the first couple of years like i almost didn't understand this about myself and like i would work really hard and then i would be absolutely fucked My, like i'd just be fucked in the head for i'd be like why do i feel like this and then i kind of realized that like oh i'm just like completely overworked and probably have been for like a month i'm just like a shell of myself compared feeling antisocial because of this one painting for like 14 hour days but yeah i but like i i guess now i kind of know like once i start like overthinking something i think that's when i know my body's telling me to like mm. right relax. because especially if i'm sitting there painting this is me on the canvas and whatever's going through my head and like sometimes it could be pure mindlessness where i'm this hyper focused you know where time's just going really quick and i don't even realize like my head's blank but then once I start just overthinking about random shit, this point of shit that I don't even need to be thinking about or like just anything, you know, just like, or even like anxious thoughts or like worrying about nothing, just like things that are just completely irrelevant. Then I was like, right, maybe, maybe it's time to stop here. But then still, I, I'm still not very good at stopping because I'm like, no, I need to keep going. I need to fucking, you know what I mean? So it's like, uh, yeah, I'm still, still a learning curve trying to figure that one out fully, but I'm definitely getting better at it. Definitely don't face like burnout as much anymore. So the way in which you create the way in which you create art, do you are you quite uh, quite clinical? So it's I have picture in my head, I have picture from client, and I just go snap, snap, and I'm in. Do you create art based on how you're feeling and you express emotion through that? How how generally do you work, or is it is it courses for courses? This is a picture painting. I follow that, and then actually I get creative in here. How does that how does that work? Yeah, well, like a lot of a lot of my work is like commission based, so like. A client gives me a photo and they want me to paint it but like my style like i kind of have like quite a distinct background so it kind of that's like what i see as like the expressive part of my commission work at least and i think that's important though because i don't want to just be like a glorified copier you know what i mean because like it doesn't feel as creative and that's and when i start doing that i feel like a bit creatively blocked so i like i've developed a style over like the last four years or whatever where i have like realism in the in the main foreground and then the background's kind of just like expressive mm. abstract different colors kind of like yeah so i guess that but then when i create my own paintings that are like just like what i want to do or like what i want to sell prints of that's a bit more expressive like when i so like i kind of like to create narratives around my own personal projects so like when i moved back home to ireland in july i created a piece that was like based off that feeling where it was kind of like the outline of Ireland with my usual style. And then it said like home in Irish, just kind of showing like, just like I might go, I just called it home. And then I reworked that piece six months later and called that home is never too far away because kind of expressing how since I've moved home, like when you're away from home, it kind of feels like everything's so distant. But then when you get back, you realize that oh, like nothing was ever that different. So kind of just like expressing my life experiences through art. So that's, yeah so yes it's a bit different for commission work and like my own personal projects but i like to i like to put my own twist on the commissions too depending mm. on what the customer wants to but then yeah. i'm actually I've, I've, i'm working on my own collection that i'm going to release across 2024 and i've had this idea for ages now where it's going to be maybe like six patents released every couple of months across this year but each patent is going to be based off like a thought, feeling, or emotion that I faced in 2023 in my first full year of full time artist. So I've been working on the first design yesterday, actually. And I think it's going to be called Patience. 
So that's going to be about having to be patient. And like, um, that's like patience with doing my art and then patience with trying to, when I was struggling and trying to grow a business and like being patient with like what I'm doing and trusting the process. So then and I think each painting, I want to kind of feature a bit of my self portrait. So like maybe different elements of my face. So maybe this one's kind of just like my eye and nose or something. And I've got in the design, I've got like lotus flowers and like a heron because they're known for their like symbolizing patience and having it like blue and orange because I guess blue is kind of like a relaxing color and orange is like energetic and the me patience is like having both you need to have be relaxed and like what you're doing but also like energetic in your pursuit if you know what i mean so the, that's my idea so i'm gonna release that collection across this year so i'm excited for that beautiful i love that a lotus flower came to my head when you said patience um, yeah because I, I was obviously trying to do my research and all what's kind of relevant and i've created a cool design but it'll be about work in progress so hopefully mm -hmm. have the first patent done in february and then maybe the next one in april so i, I kind of like the idea i don't even know if that's i don't think that's a conventional way for an artist to release a collection usually they'd work on it and then like unveil it all in one go or have like a personal exhibition but i kind of like the idea of this like releasing them as i go through the year because my feelings are going to change as i go you know what i mean i kind of want it to be like a constant work in progress because as an artist i feel like that's i don't know it just kind of feels like what it's all about it just feels like a constant work in progress because it's very like it's just because it's constantly changing there's no rules into what i do so why don't i just like take my time and just explore how i'm feeling because i know i'm going to constantly change and like these pieces are going to be based heavily off my life experiences and what i've went through so i'm going to go through more stuff so i just like the idea of gradually releasing them and it's kind of like creating a narrative over a longer period of time to offer at least the patience and then the next one could be resilience it's almost like each patent is like a step of 2023 but i'm releasing it now it's like telling my story a visual story i guess beautiful yeah i think entrepreneurship is uh, both a science and an art and uh, the reason that comes to my mind is when i look at what I do, I'm more on the artistic side of, uh, of entrepreneurship. Don't get me wrong. I look at the data, look at the numbers and, and all of that, yeah. but I'm more about playing and tinkering and toying. And when you mm -hmm. said about commissioning those six paintings, which mm -hmm. I was kind of hoping you'd say Thierry Henry, Dennis Bergkamp, <laughs> Ian Wright, but you know, can't have them all. But the, uh, the, the thing that came to my mind was, um, at the TMP event we did, uh, not last year, the year before I rented a, yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah, had yeah, two. Yeah, so Sean spoke at one of the lock-ins, and I did yeah, a lock-in the that. year before that. Uh, the year enough. before that, I rented an underground. You'd you'd love this. I think you'd actually, I think you'd probably love to do um, a gallery in there. So this place yeah. is called Aura's London, and it's underneath Waterloo Station. So it's underneath a bridge. You walk in, and there's graffiti all down the left, all down the right, and you go into this almost. It almost feels like an underground cave. You know, it's like this underground mm, area, and there's canvas all around the outside and there's projectors and we were projecting onto the walls stars and space uh, and, and if they get um, 3d and yeah yeah these kind of feel to it or something that's yeah, it, it sounds cool. cinematic and, but the bit that came in was uh, i did a i did a and i guess i never looked at it like this but i guess it, it could have been described as an artistic experience hmm. i projected onto the walls various different things to describe the various different emotions so one of the things I projected was, um, was anger. And there was like flames going on. There was like a big energy so that you could see all the flames and you could see like it was all shaped, the room was shaking and there was noise going on. Well, um, I guess that does sound very similar to that collection I was talking about, kind of like the visual representation of the feeling. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, when we had the, we, we had the, the visual side with the sound side and I was getting people to practice feeling angry. And then I did another one where it was overwhelmed. So I had static really loud really horrible like oh my god and then it's all moving as well and and just practicing okay be overwhelmed i sit in the overwhelm i had one where they felt like uh they, they felt like they were absolutely smashing life and there was a, there was a boxer like that with his mm -hmm. hands up i like, really loving it and uh what else did we play with we played with a number of different uh, confidence as well confidence mm -hmm. was another um feeling and emotion and is that it, is that is that like trying to like create that narrative and like tell that story while these people or is that like the guests are going experiencing this as they come in is it 
No, they're all sat down. They're all in the room already. Oh, so they're, they're all uh, watching this. They're all they're all in there, and then we go right, guys. But well, I want you to practice feeling these emotions because these emotions are all going to be the things that trip you up in your business and in your mm. performance. So in there, we were just playing and throwing stuff onto the walls and making lots of sound, and people would just practice being overwhelmed and anxious or happy or com or confident. And mm. flow state was another one. And in the flow mm. state, we had. Um, Oh, clarity was that flow state was like these these colors were all moving around in a really cool way. But clarity, we use up in a mountain and it was all white, white, crisp snow, crisp blue sky. And it was just practicing and playing with that. Mm. And people don't really think about emotion. It's energy in motion. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter if you're an athlete. You've got some athletes that are very aggressive. You've mm. got some athletes that are very sort of timid and, and clinical. You got artists, just as you explained there, you're going through the various different emotions and expressing mm. that. Same with entrepreneurs. If you look at, say, Microsoft versus Apple, two very different, two very different views on things. Apple is these are for the creators, for the doers, for the creatives. So we make everything beautiful. Whereas Microsoft is, no, we're the business guys. We we yeah. we're just we're just here to make business applications work. And then that's and that's it. That's and the message that. you're trying to portray. Yeah. When we talk yeah, about creativity, it's playing with emotions and mm. dipping into those, which is why I asked you the questions as to how much does emotion come into into your work? Oh yeah, massively, massively. Because even like when I because with my content, I always try to like create a narrative in any like video or anything I do because I think it's important because people can relate to it, and that's kind of part of the reason why this new collection I'm bringing out this year is all based around the emotions because people can relate to them. Because if I've got a patent called patience and I explain my narrative and I create this narrative around it where like this is for anyone who's had to be patient in their life because everybody's had to be patient in like different ways. Obviously like parents have to be patient with their kids and that's completely different than me being patient with my art, but it's still like something that we can relate on. And it's like another selling point to this piece of art rather than just being visually good. It's like it connects on a deeper level. And I guess like I can create the narrative around that in my reels and stuff like that and that's probably one of my favorite things about what i do as an artist like creating the content around the art as well and trying to connect on like a deeper level with with these potential customers or just people who enjoy my work mm. and i guess i started a, a new wee mini series of reels on my instagram there called behind the canvas where i go into detail about past patents but it's more like explaining like what I was going through at the time and the significance of this patent, how it had my life, but also like the commission itself and like what my client was going through at the time and the reason behind the patent, because especially when it's like commission based work, it's hard to make people care. And as an artist, like one of my main jobs is making people care about what I'm doing. So if it's just like a family portrait that no one knows, it's hard to make them care about this random family. But if I go into detail about, why this has significance to them and why it's important to me and what happened in my life it's like people can buy into it more so i made my first video about that there two days ago but people really liked it and i really enjoyed making it too because and I, and I always say as well like the real beauty is the story behind the artwork rather than the physical art itself because that's only half the art the physical product like the whole meaning behind it is just as powerful i'll tell you a very funny story um <laughs> i didn't believe in art like, I, just, I just didn't believe I just didn't believe it was a thing like I remember uh, at school being in art and just thinking what a load of shit this is like ridiculous like what what, what a waste of time I was like the most practical man for little boy in the world I was like mm -hmm. if this isn't gonna help me make me more money like what's the point why do we need art in the world didn't get it I didn't no. get it until I was about I'm gonna say 22 maybe 21 I end up in uh, Amsterdam and I take these magic mushrooms oh, and amazing. next thing you know, I'm in this room and in this room, it was like, we were in a, we were in a hostel. So it was six of us all in this room and the, the walls, I think it must've been about 19 actually, all the walls are all pink, like an off pink and an off white. Mm -hmm. And I'm taking these mushrooms and then it gone from this horrible room to I'm in a cupcake and I'm in this <laughs> cupcake and I'm looking around and I'm like, why am I in a cupcake? And I don't know if you've ever been to Amsterdam or not, but it looks like yeah. Assassin's Creed. Like I was looking out the window and I was seeing like this clock tower and I, and I was like, I'm in a video game. I'm in a cupcake in here. And then there's Assassin's Creed outside. And I was just, I just didn't really, I was just so blown away. And then I remember looking at this piece of art on the wall 
And this is how much debt I ended up with this piece of art. I looked at it and I went, oh my God, I understand art. No, no, John, I was like, I understand art. And I said to my friend, I understand art. Because he loved art. He's like, what do you mean? And I said, well, think about this for a minute, right? This guy had a thought, an idea. He had a feeling, he had an emotion or whatever. And his brain has spoken to his hands to then go and create something. So he's taking this canvas and he's painted this park. And on this park, all I can see is like a park with these cyclists. And the cyclists through the magic mushrooms are cycling around and all of like the, the wind is blowing on this painting. And I was like, and he's done his best to communicate and express what he wants to do on that canvas. But here's the crazy thing. Based on me and my experiences, I will look at that and that will create an emotional response or a a response within me, or there'll be no response, which is inherently a response. So then I'm now looking at this from my perspective and what he's trying to project and what I'm processing might be completely different. And then I went a step further and I was like, oh my God, music. That's what music, because I didn't really understand music either. I was like, it's the same thing because there was some music on. I was like, this girl... This guy, who this musician loves, this girl, and he's expressing his love, and he's using his brain to play with all of the to play with all of the sounds, and I'm just mm-hmm. absorbing this through my ears and through my eyes from the paintings. It's going into my brain. It's creating these responses, and it was in that moment, bro. Yeah, like, so I, live, I live in Dubai. It's very there's lots of flashy areas and all that yeah. ostentatious bullshit. I love going to Our Circle Avenue where there's six art galleries and they're changing every single week. And I'm and whenever I tell my friends I knew him as a kid, they're like what on earth and i'm walking around i'm like well, what did this person mean or what did this the one person made these um iranian i like i like sculptures they made these yeah. iranian vases that um look like bombs so mm-hmm. it's got like all of these mosaic and it looks like a really beautiful like almost iranian carpet but it's in the shape of a bomb it's like whoa like that just blew my mind i'm like what what i can see what they're trying to do like there's a beautiful culture wrapped up in war like crazy so i never got it mate i never understood i never understood art until i went to amsterdam and next thing you know my whole reality changed no that honestly because that's mad because i've been to amsterdam a couple of times but i went in uh last september or september 2022 and took truffles for the first time and i don't even think i've said this anyone before but i think that that made me understand painting way better and like I only started thinking about it a few months later, but I remember like I took truffles and we were, you know, Von Del Park in Amsterdam. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were walking around there and obviously like started coming up in these truffles. And like, you know, the way you can see the kind of like things. I don't know if you had the same experience, but like I could start to see things in like different frames, like in different like planes or whatever. And I remember just staring at these like um these flowers and they just went into these like like loads of frames. And I felt like I could understand each frame and the importance of each frame to make up the the final piece and i feel like in 2023 like i got like way way better at painting like and i didn't really understand why you know what i mean but like i was just picking up things like every single day and every painting got better and better and sometimes i put it down to that experience on, on the truffles because i feel like part of me my brain can understand like how to paint and layers as if like the frames that i seen that day and i feel like i have a, some new understanding of how that works i'll say i don't even know if i'm explaining that coherently yeah. but something happened that day i think <laughs> no, i get it i, mean. I get it i think yeah, something happened that it. day i could be talking pure bullshit and nothing happened that day but i think it might have i don't know hmm. well that's what those chemicals do is they they mess with your your perception of reality in yeah. a really interesting way and that can mess with the colors it can mess with the sounds it mm. can mess with even your depth like your depth of okay that's here that's here that's here that's yeah. here that's here and i i think um i went from living in black and white for that experience to then living in right color off. after that and after that it, I, I could i can really appreciate the beauty of art and what it is. Right. before i was like you can't put it on a spreadsheet what's the point <laughs> like that's how linear my, my, yeah. my linear my thinking was until mm-hmm. i was able to go oh okay it's it's expression and that's yep. fucking cool. And I that's say this cool. to entrepreneurs that it particularly to other, we coach a lot of coaches. Well, the way in which you coach and the way, way in which you educate, that is an expression. That's an artistic expression. Yes, yeah. you've got to educate them on, on you know, like everybody can talk about, uh, I don't know, calorie deficit or everyone can yeah. talk about psychology or everyone can talk about mindset and structure and whatever. 
But the way in which you talk about that, the way in which you express that, that is inherently a creative pursuit itself. Mm -hmm. And yours might be just the most straight down the pipe thing in the world. If you look at Sean Casey, his unique style is he kind of mumbles a little bit and he kind of just doesn't doesn't really kind of go into too much. And that's yeah. but that's his unique bit. He doesn't care. He's just but like, that's a, that's a salad point that makes him different too. Because that's even not about me, like sometimes I think this being like a wee Irish guy is half a selling point for me. Like I feel like people like that. And then I was thinking like, you know, if I ever lost that side of me, I feel like I can't, you know what I mean? I'm not saying I ever would because I'm just myself online, but I feel like just being yourself is the niche, you know what I mean? And like the yeah. same as like Sean, just like him being himself is just the unique selling point because people just like him for who he is. So Essentially, it doesn't even matter what he does. If people are his fan for who he is, it's like a cheat code. Yeah. Well, you're going to be judged whether you like it or not. Yeah, that's, that, that's it. Exactly. That's the reality. You're going to be judged whether you like it or not. And people are going to so, judge your art, whether that's a business, yeah. whether that's your actual paintings, and mm -hmm. not everyone's going to get it, and, and, and that's okay. But you might as well be judged on who you really are versus yeah. being judged on this yeah. fake person that you put up. Exactly. And also, it's so much easier to be yourself consistently because you are yourself, like, like, you don't have to think about who you're being because you know if you have like an online persona like if i had a persona online or whatever like there's no way i'd be keeping it up by now because i think it would just take one bad day where i, I, I sort of feeling anxious about it and i would just stop doing it so it's just like being authentic is just so much easier it just takes away any thinking and i'll yeah. say like that's probably going to get rid of a lot of potential customers that just don't like me for who i am but like they never they're never going to buy from me anyway so may as well put, put like get rid of these people that don't like me for who i am well, you've got to put out an energetic frequency just yeah, that's out a, into the world that yeah. somebody goes, that's cool, and you want to attract more of those people. Because yeah. if you put out an energetic frequency that's not you, mm. well, guess what? You're going to attract people that aren't for you. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. it is the core, core root of who you are and what you stand for. My three biggest values, be water, we adapt, we create, we deliver. That's a high-performance mm. element. Be mm. honor, we're old school. If we shake hands, we do a deal, we do a deal, we're transparent, we're just up front, uh, and be love. In a digital world, there's human beings at the other end of the phone, and we f we forget that. So when I put that out into the world, well, guess what? I attract lots of people yeah, that want to help other people, that yeah. want to be fucking world class at what they do. They want to be uh, they, they they operate with honor and they operate with love. Like we got connected through Ben Hawksworth. Um, yeah. He has those values in abundance. Yeah. So when he says, "Kieran, go meet this guy," or "I have a chat with this person," whenever I do, I I know inherently that they're mm -hmm. always going to subscribe to these values. Whereas if my values were the opposite we just never connect. So it's yeah, learning exactly. that, well, I am who I am. And and if you haven't done this exercise already, just like anyone listening back to this back, like think about what do I really care about? Who are my favorite people and why are they my favorite people? And what are the patterns between those? And then you'll start to isolate. Okay, this is what I'm about. So the same for you and your, your art. You'll know what your values are. You know what you stand for, what the pieces you enjoyed working on, the ones that you didn't yeah. enjoy and just rocking up and being you. If all of a sudden you, I don't know, I can't think of a, if all of a sudden you changed your whole style and you started wearing, I don't know, crazy, crazy oh, little this... silk scarves and then yeah, all of a sudden yeah. you put on an accent and then all of a sudden yeah. you're like, I live in Miami now, guys. Like, you yeah, know, yeah. Like, and that, and, and you're just not being you. Yeah. Um, or even if it was like small changes, say if I was just like started like getting a big, bit big from my own boots, you know, just a bit, bit cocky or it's like, I feel like people would tell straight away just like, because like, I think I can tell when someone changes their personality a wee bit and it's like, oh, like why, why are you being like that? You know what I mean? Just be the version that I know. Like, just be authentic. Well, like. they, say, they say success and money accelerates who you really are. Hmm. Okay. And I've seen that a lot. You know, when somebody... Like the true colors come out once you get a... Yeah. Case of success, and you know and somebody's a great human being, they just get even greater. <laughs> like, they just do even cooler shit. Yeah, and I suppose. On the flip side... It, some if some and sometimes it's not just that sometimes it's insecurities and doubts that they haven't worked through yet and then that comes out in ways and because it's either very public or it then becomes a bit more of an issue but it's mm. when you can just go right well what am i about what do i stand for what's important to me and then also accept that you're going to evolve and change and what's important to you now might not be important to you later and mm. that's my that number one value be water like you adapt well, you create, you shift with that and just and just move you know mm -hmm. yeah Probably need to get better at being more water in fairness. A bit yeah. more fluid. Yeah, yeah. But I've really enjoyed this uh this conversation. Yeah, man, it was sick. Thank, yeah, thank first ever podcast too. It was good. Oh, congrats. Wow. Yeah, man. Oh, Debut. Debut. Debut podcast. Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, man. 
fuck, I wouldn't mind starting my own or getting on more. I'm actually, well, that's not even a podcast, but I'm doing some talks now this month, actually, going to schools, talking about my story and trying to teach the kids, well, give them a bit more inspiration that they can make a career out of art. Because obviously, when I was in school, no one thought it was a sustainable career. So that's my mission, trying to get more people creating art. So that's yeah, the plan. I love that. I, I def, that, that's probably why I was so against it. I was like, I can't see a career in that. So uh, why am I wasting my time with this? Whereas with maths, I was like, well, I need to be able to, you know, if I'm yeah. going to build a business, I need to know maths so I can understand how much money we're making, right? <laughs> but then when it comes to art, I was like, ah, oh, God, I can't make the connection. So I think that's a really, uh, that's a really cool thing that you're doing, mate. And, yeah, man. Uh, it's cool. Next generation of artists, try to inspire them. Because I, I wonder, because like, I'm just a normal person, you know what I mean? I'm not fucking anything special or anything. Like, there's no reason why no one can do what I'm doing now. Like, mm-hmm. or, you know what I mean? Most people like. Yeah. That's the way I see Thank you so much. Where can everyone find you on uh, uh, On Instagram, uh, Jordan Brain underscore art. And at fair, I don't really use TikTok or Facebook that much. It's kind of primarily focused on Instagram at the minute. But yeah. Amazing. That's, I do. that's where you can find me. Thank you so much for coming on to the podcast, mate. Oh, it well. If uh, if you guys have enjoyed this conversation, please do share it to to your stories. Um, we're going to put this out there out to the world. I know so many people are going to find it helpful. There'll be loads of aspiring artists that that, that listen to this stuff as well, mate. That's going to give a listen and go, wow, that that was very helpful. And uh, yeah, please do share infinite love, and I'll catch you all next week on the next episode.